I have a problem. And let me explain to you exactly what my problem is. I have a wireless microphone. And it works quite well. The problem is, I want to have two or three people simultaneously using wireless microphones. And I want them to uh, all have a high quality signal. So, I guess my problem is, how do I make that happen? I can look at this uh, wireless microphone and I realize that uh, there are some models of uh, transmitters and that this is a transmitter and when I compare the way this transmitter works with the models in the uh, textbook for electronic communications I can see that uh, this wireless microphone matches up to the model of an FM transmitter. So, that's a good start. So I suppose if I begin to analyze this wireless microphone the same way I would analyze a FM transmitter, that's a good way to proceed to uh, solve my problem, which is I want to have more than one of these wireless mics working at the same time. What have we got for tools? Well, I'm going to uh, take a little look at the spectrum analyzer because from the spectrum analyzer we should be able to measure the signal to noise ratio and if we have a, a very high signal to noise ratio that'll mean that this particular microphone is producing a high quality signal so let's look to check that one out well uh, here's the uh, spectrum analyzer instrument that uh, I know will help me solve some of the problems uh, and help me put together my uh, multiple uh, uh, FM transmitters. Uh, so I can see now, now when I'm using this microphone that um, there's a signal on the uh, spectrum analyzer and I think that represents the uh, carrier frequency of this FM transmitter. Well, I'm just going to turn off the FM transmitter and see if the uh, if that carrier disappears. Oh, it's back. It's gone. It's back. So, in fact, you know, what I am able to uh, do right now is uh, come up with a picture of the carrier. Uh, and uh, that's great. It, from this distance, it looks like a pretty high quality signal. If I can get a little bit closer, I may be able to um, see that uh, quality a little bit better. So I'm going to see if I can't uh, maneuver a little bit closer to the screen. Okay, we'll, we'll be uh, adjusting things. I'm not going to make you look at the adjustments. Well, where was I? I said we'd hope to get a closer look at the spectrum analyzer, and I have gotten a, a closer look. Um, sometimes the uh, the video signal doesn't do justice to what we can see. I just picked up a little bit of noise there, and you probably heard. So I'm still transmitting, and I can see in the spectrum analyzer display my carrier. And there it's gone. Oh, somebody else has a carrier coming up there in the, a little higher in frequency. So looking at that display, the frequency is along the x-axis, or the horizontal axis. So the numeric display, which gives the frequency of the center of the screen, will give us some idea. It says that the numeric center of the, the frequency of the center of the screen is 170.82 megahertz. So we would then be able to, if that carrier is at the center of the screen, which it is, we can now say, well, yeah, that's, uh, that's the frequency of the carrier. A very important thing to uh, be able to measure. Now, the other thing that's important to be able to measure is the uh, signal-to-noise ratio, because that's uh, a measure of the quality of that signal. Now, the noise uh, at the very bottom of the spectrum analyzer display is a bit of a wide band, and that's often one of the challenges about making this measurement. Do I measure from the top of the band, the bottom of the band? And if you said, oh, I think I'll measure uh, from the middle of the band, that's probably what most people would do, kind of an average. All right, so if I 
if I were to count the number of divisions on that screen uh, from the middle, the middle of that noise band all the way up to the top of that uh, signal carrier, uh, I would count the number of uh, vertical squares. And uh, I'm going to count the whole ones first. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then, depending on the actual time I look at the signal, it stays pretty much at six. Maybe it goes to 6.2. And maybe if I uh, factor in the fuzzy bit at the bottom, maybe I'm talking about something between 6.2 and 6.5 divisions. So, when I look at the scale on the side of the spectrum analyzer here, I can see that each division is uh, set up to be 10 dB. So if I had 6.5 times 10, that gives me 65 dB. So I could say, you know, looking at this signal right now, the signal to noise ratio is 65 dB. And when you check the textbook on that, that's a very good quality signal. So I'm very happy with the uh, quality of this signal. I guess what I need to know is uh, how many of these uh, wireless mics can I operate at the same time. So I know the frequency of one, and I may want to spend some time now figuring out what's the bandwidth that this signal occupies. So we'll see if we can see a little bit of that on the spectrum analyzer in the uh, next portion. Okay. I'm back again. And I still have my signal on the spectrum analyzer. What I've done, however, is I have uh, taken the control that sets the number of hertz per division, and I've adjusted it so that uh, we have somewhere around uh, 200 uh, hertz per um, division uh, in the x-axis. So now, as the uh, bandwidth of the signal changes, I can see probably about 800 hertz on either side of the carrier. And I guess the important thing to see is that as I speak, the bandwidth changes. It changes because of the volume of the speech. Uh, it changes because of the frequency. So the problem is when I want to put more than one microphone operating at the same time, I have to make sure that the bandwidth changes when I speak into this microphone don't cause interference with the other microphones. And that really is the challenging problem. So now I'm looking uh, with a little bit more um, megahertz per division. I don't see the sidebands being created um, uh, as in such detail, but I can see that the uh, signal is getting uh, a little bit wider when I speak. And how wide uh, does it get? Well, that's what I'm going to try to measure. It would be very difficult to uh, try and uh, measure uh, the change in bandwidth of that signal if I use somebody talking. Well, who's going who's to talk that much anyway? So I have to find a way to replace uh, my voice uh, with a test tone, because with a test tone, I can uh, just go to the function generator, and I can select the frequency of the tone, and I can select the amplitude of the tone, and I can see how both the frequency and the amplitude impact the bandwidth of the signal. So, hopefully we'll be able to uh, bring you some uh, stories on that, too. Thanks very much.